Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my marathon series. whole time and following me on Instagram, you know that I recently just ran the Chicago Marathon. So I have been training for this race or was training for about four months. It was an 18 week program. So a huge time commitment. And if you guys have been following along, you know pretty much how everything went. But in today's video, I want to share with you guys how the actual race went because I have been documenting my training through this whole series and every single episode I've also been featuring a different facet of training, whether it's how to fuel for running, how to train, how to prepare for the race, all of the gear that you need, all of that stuff I've obviously been documenting as well. But I've been telling you guys all about how my training went so it just doesn't make any sense to not tell you how the actual race went because, you know, I feel like you guys have been on this journey with me just as much as I have been. And I did actually vlog during the race weekend so if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. Really just gives you like a nice picture of like how the whole weekend went. But basically when it comes to the actual race, I would say that it went good. It wasn't great. Um, it wasn't awful by any means. It was just, it was good. So the race was definitely harder than I was anticipating or than I expected and I think there's a couple of reasons for that which I will get into but hands down um, it was just harder than I was expecting. It was definitely more difficult physically and mentally than the first marathon I ran which was kind of just like a joyride in comparison I feel like. So it was definitely um, a lot more difficult than I anticipated and there are two kind of reasons I think that that happened. Race day was hot and it was sunny. There was not really much cloud coverage. The sun was just beating down on us um, and it was very hot. October, early October in Chicago tends to be on the chillier side. That's what I was crossing my fingers for <laughs> the whole training. But of course we had this warm front um, and it ended up being pretty hot on race day. So the thing is I had trained in the heat so I didn't, I mean it wasn't like the end of the world by any means, it was what I was used to, but whether you're used to running in heat and sun or not, running for you know up to five hours in those conditions, like no matter if you've trained it or not, it's hard, like it beats you down literally. <laughs> and the other reason I think it was harder than I thought it was going to be, something that I just didn't necessarily anticipate was I was on my feet from about 5 a.m. up until the race started. I mean, we crossed the starting line at around 8.09, 8.10. So that was definitely something that played into it that did not play into my first marathon. This was a huge race, so we got up at 5 a.m. We had to walk, I don't know if it was exactly a full mile, but close to a mile probably, to the starting line. And then we were standing on our feet, we were in line for the bathroom, and then we went straight to get in line in our corral and stood there for about 40 minutes. So I was on my feet for a good three hours before the race even started and my legs started to hurt like around mile five, which normally when I'm on a long distance run, my legs are completely fine. I don't feel anything until maybe nine or 10 miles in, they start to get a little sore, a little fatigue, my hips, hips start to hurt. But that happened way earlier in the race. So at mile five, I was like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. So for my first marathon, it was a really, really small race. So I literally was sitting parked in a car at the starting line up until probably 10 minutes before we started. So I was able to stay seated for like an hour before we even started running. So just something I didn't necessarily think about. I think being on my feet for all that time beforehand um, definitely played a role because my legs were sore and tired and fatigued much earlier on than I was anticipating. So those were definitely, I think, the two things that played the biggest role in it being more difficult and me running a little bit slower. So my actual finishing time for this race was literally right on the nose at five hours, which is like, I ran for five hours, what? <laughs> the first marathon I did, I ran a 4.35. So that's, I mean, that's 20, 25 minutes difference, which is a significant amount of time to kind of jump up. 
And I had mentioned before that I was anticipating probably going a little bit slower just because of my training. I just expected to be like maybe five, 10 minutes slower than 4:30 my 4:35 time. But I was not expecting that big of a jump. However, there were two things in this race that were different than my first. First, I had to stop to pee. That's literally never happened to me during a race before. I had to pee the whole first 13 miles and I just kept thinking it was gonna go away because I was sweating. Um, but obviously at the hydration stations, I was still drinking because you need to hydrate and you don't feel good if you're not hydrating. So I just, I had to pee. So finally around mile 14, I found some porta potties and I got off the course, I peed lost a couple minutes there probably um, but that was something that i didn't do during my first race and secondly my watch according to my watch i actually ran 27.4 miles not 26.2 and in the first marathon i ran i don't remember it being very off i mean it's pretty much impossible when you're on a course to actually run the 26.2 miles because there's turns and you're on you know different areas of the course you're, you might be weaving in and out of people but I certainly don't remember it being that off in my first race. Now, it also is possible that you know my watch might not have been completely correct. I don't really know how it works when you're around you know 40,000 other people that have GPSs, um, and I think also the city can possibly like mess with it a little bit. I know that for sure it messed with my time when I started running, um, like the first few miles. It was saying I was running like eight minute, 30 second miles, which is just like. There's, I mean, I know for a fact that I wasn't, because when you look at your split times after the race, it tells you like how quickly you were going. Um, and I was running my normal like startup pace, um, not eight minute, 30 second miles. So I don't know if 27.4 is, you know, perfectly accurate, um, but there's no way it was off by like 1.2 miles. So I definitely ran a little bit further, which obviously increases your time because it's a longer distance. So overall, my time was definitely slower than I was expecting, but that honestly doesn't really bother me. I've said before that, you know, I don't really worry about time so much. Time is not a huge focus for me. I more just like to run by feel and just run whatever feels good to my body on that specific day. So, um, like I've said, meeting a specific time isn't very rewarding for me, actually feeling good and just being able to continue and, um, you know, not get injured or have cramps or end up in a medical tent. Like that's, things that I want to avoid. I would rather just feel good during the run and that's what's most rewarding. So I'm not really too, I mean, I'm definitely not upset about the time. I really, it, it doesn't, I still feel very proud. I still feel very excited that I accomplished it. Um, it was definitely slower than I anticipated, but there was also factors that I didn't account for. So I mean, hey, what can you do? One thing I will say though that I'm proud of myself for is I never walked unless it was at a um, like a water station. So pretty much at every hydration station, um, I stopped to walk. In the beginning, it was just you know a couple steps, just to slug back water or Gatorade, and then get go you know get going again. But towards the end, like I would say, like the last, not necessarily the second half, but definitely the like the last third, um, every water station, I was you know stopping and walking the entirety of the water station, and then I would get going. Um, but there was a lot of times where I wanted to walk. I mean, just, I was like, I'm sick of running. My body is, you know, so tired. I would just much rather walk, but I was just determined just to, you know, one foot in front of the other, just keep chugging along. Eventually I will get to that finish line and I can walk at every, um, uh, water station. Now, walking is not necessarily a bad thing at all. Some people's whole, um, strategy is to walk, run, walk, run, walk, run. But for me, you know, uh, through my training, my biggest thing is just like, I always just want to keep going. So I was hoping that in the race, I could kind of like keep going with that, duplicate that, and just being able to keep chugging along. And I was able to do that, um, despite how hard it was. It really, really was tough. I would say from about mile 18 on, it was really hard mentally and um, it was just it was just it was difficult I don't even know how to describe it it's funny like when you're like when it's over and you're looking back on it I feel like it's like how women describe childbirth like during it they're like I'm never doing this again <laughs> and then afterwards they're like oh I would do it again it wasn't so bad um, so I feel like you kind of like forget the pain but I do remember um, while I was running it's funny you get very emotional towards the end because your body is just so tired that like you just can't even like control your emotions and I remember just thinking about like I'm just so excited to like flop on our hotel bed like and be able to sit down and be horizontal like laying down and I like started to tear up like because I was just like that sounds so nice <laughs> which is just funny so if you've never run a marathon and you're planning on doing it if you get a little emotional towards the end 
totally normal, totally, totally normal. And another thing that I thought was interesting and makes me feel better that it was not just me who was struggling, <laughs> um, if you ever run um, like a half marathon or a marathon before, actually I don't know if they do these for half marathons, probably, but they have um, pacers, so they have like a group of people who will wear an extra bib that tells you their estimated finishing time, whether it's like 3.45 or 4 hours, 4.15, so on and so forth, and one person's like has a little flag with the time. But there's usually a little group of them so I kept seeing you know these groups of course during you know throughout the run and there were a lot of pacers that um, were back with me in like the five hour group that had like 345 415 430 on their bibs 445 um, and some of them I even noticed like took their pacer shirts off and put them inside out because they didn't want people to think that they were running that time. Basically, even pacers, um, people that were in the group, not necessarily the flag holder, but people that were in the pace group with those time bibs who were planning on definitely finishing within that time frame, I, they were confident enough to wear the bib, they were falling behind as well. So that made me feel a little bit better because it wasn't just me who was struggling. It was definitely just, it was a, it was a tough, it was a tough race. But overall, it was a great experience. I did have fun, even though it was hard um, and challenging. I had a blast. I enjoyed Chicago. I'm like so excited to go back to that city. It's so great, so clean. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, it was amazing. The crowds were awesome. The energy was great. It's just like kind of like a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, obviously, you can run more marathons. But it's just like a very cool thing to be like surrounded by all of that energy and all those people cheering. It's just, I don't know, it's just really, really cool. And a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, what's next? What race are we going to do next? Am I going to even do another one? And honestly, going into this, the, the Chicago Marathon, like from the get-go, starting training, I kind of thought that this might be my last one, at least for a while, a good while. Um, I do, you know, it's been fun running marathons, um, but it's just a lot of work. <laughs> training is really intense and it's just like time consuming. And while I do like to run, I don't love running enough to do it once a year. Like I just, I just don't. Um, because I, I like to switch it up, I like to be able to do new things, I like to be able to like listen to my body. If it's just like not up for a run, I can do something else. So um, I think it's definitely, it could be my one, my last one forever, but never say never. Um, but it's funny, after you, even if it's like really freaking hard, afterwards like they're addicting, like you want to do another one. Um, maybe if this one had gone really, really well, I would have probably done another one, maybe even like soon after, but I don't know, I think I'm going to like hang up my at least marathon training shoes for a while, and I don't know, maybe I'll do one someday. But that is all I have guys, that is my marathon recap. I want to thank you so much for just coming along on this journey with me and following me on this series. It has been so cool just to be able to like sit down and share my thoughts and my experience vent a little <laughs> to you guys throughout the training process and also so many of you are either already training or um, planning on training for races in the future and it's just been like it's just been so cool to share this with you all so thank you for you know kind of coming along for the ride it's it's been awesome make sure to follow me on my socials so we can hang out on there I can try and share with you guys what workouts I'll be doing now although I do plan on still running not um, to the degree or uh, you know the intensity that I've been training uh, during training but I definitely do want to keep running because I'm in such good shape now that I don't want to lose it. So yeah, we'll see. I'll definitely try and share um, some of that on my socials. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I would absolutely love for you to join my little community here. But that is it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.